Hamlet is a great example of the many types of psychological theories. Hamlet is a selfish yet loyal character, which creates a conflicting struggle within himself. This gives us plenty of room to pick apart his character and analyze his motives. In order to fully understand Hamlet's emotions and actions, we must peer into his mind. According to Freud, the mind can be divided into two main parts. The conscious mind includes everything that we are aware of. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think and talk about rationally. A part of this includes our memory, which is not always part of consciousness, but can be retrieved easily at any time and brought into our awareness. Freud called this, ordinary memory, the preconscious. The unconscious mind is a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges, and memories that are outside of our conscious awareness. Most of the contents of the unconscious are unacceptable or unpleasant, such as feelings of pain, anxiety, or conflict. According to Freud, the unconscious continues to influence our behavior and experience, even though we are unaware of these underlying influences. First, let's look at some examples of Hamlet's conscious mind. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is Horatio, and much offense too, touching this vision here. T'was an honest ghost that let me tell you, for your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. Now, friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, grant me one poor request. What is it, my lord? You will. Never make it known what you have seen here tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it! I swear it, my lord! Upon my sword! My lord, I have sworn already. In this scene, Hamlet is acting completely normal. He's talking to Horatio just as he always had. In fact, he's telling his dear friend that he's going to act crazy. Keyword, act. <laughs> Do you know me, my lord? Excellent, well. You are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would say you were so honest, man. Honest, my lord? Aye, sir. To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man in ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a good kiss and carry and... Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but your daughter may conceive, friend. Look to it. What say you? Still harping on my daughter. Yet he knew me not at first. He called me a fishmonger. And truly, in my youth, I have suffered such extremity of love very near this. I'll speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words. Words. WORDS! What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you read. This scene makes Hamlet's portrayal of madness evident. As shown in the previous scene, he was never this flamboyant and immature. What makes it humorous is the fact that Polonius actually believes it. Hamlet was smart to act this way in front of Polonius, because Polonius is just the one to spread the word of Hamlet's madness. This goes to show that Hamlet is in his right mind and is still able to make critical decisions. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither. Say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is a special place in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it will not come. If it is not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all, since no man of aught he leaves knows what it is to leave the times. Let be. However, even in his madness, somehow at the end of this play, Hamlet still seems to form coherent and clear sentences that show deeper meaning of his realizations and intentions in his life. Now let's look at some examples of Hamlet's unconscious mind, that including Freudian slips. Freudian slips being a verbal or memory mistake that is believed to be linked to the unconscious mind. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed, longed to be delivered. 
and pray you now receive them. Not I. I never give you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath compose as many things more rich. With the funerals. Take these again. For to your noble mind, rich gifts wax poor, givers prove unkind. Here, my lord. Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? In what means you both? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty shall admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have more commerce than an honesty? I truly believe that the power of beauty will serve to transform honesty from the to the body. Then the force of honesty to, can translate beauty into its likeness. This was sometime in paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I loved you once. Indeed, my lord, you may be believed so. You should not have been, for virtue did not inoculate at all stop, but relished it. I loved you not! I wasn't more deceived. Get thee to a nerve! Hamlet starts by saying he loves Ophelia, which he later obviously takes back. Some might interpret this as his way of protecting her, in which case that hypothesis proves true. However, initially he forgets his motives and has a Freudian slip when he says he loves her. He then realizes that if he truly loves her, he has to let her go. With this, his conscience returns and he sends her away. However, Ophelia doesn't take it this way at all. <laughs> And, well... <laughs> now that we've given you some background information, we'll now show you when the conscious mind meets the unconscious mind. Now, Mother, what is the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. The unconscious mind deals with the emotions we don't want to feel. Hamlet has been suppressing the need to express his pain towards his father's death and his disappointment in his mother's lack of mourning the entire play. The only time we see Hamlet acknowledge these feelings is when he is alone and in the midst of a soliloquy. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question the wicked tongue. <laughs> what about now, Hamlet? However, Gertrude is in denial and doesn't see anything wrong with how she's been acting. It's obvious she has contained her feelings and shoved them deep into her unconscious. What hast thou forgot me? No, no, not by the rood, for you are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it not be so my mother? This is where the unconscious mind demands to be felt. Hamlet is no longer suppressing his pain and disappointment, but is rather boldly expressing his anger at his mother. This is no longer considered a Freudian slip, as his conscience is adopting these feelings and making them known. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come, and sit you down. You rush not. You go not until I set up a glass so you may see the inmost part of me. What was that do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! Help! How? How now? A rat? Dead for a duke! Dead! What hast thou done? This brings us to the theory of death instincts. Freud proposed that the goal of life is death. He noted that after people experience a traumatic event such as war, they often reenact the experience. He concluded that people hold an unconscious desire to die, but that this wish is largely tempered by life instincts. In Freud's view, self-destructive behavior is an expression of the energy created by death instincts. When this energy is directed outwards onto others, it is expressed as aggression and violence. Everyone harbors this in their unconscious, meaning Hamlet is not the only one who feels enjoyment in the event of someone's death, as unbelievable as that may seem. This scene shows the difference between being mad and going mad. We've already shown how it is not possible for Hamlet to be truly crazy. Therefore, this is just an act of anger. And that's all Hamlet is. Angry. Nay, I know not. Is this the king? What a rash of bloody deed this is! As you can see, Hamlet is very conflicted with his motives. But we can conclude that, in comparison to the psychological lens, that Hamlet is indeed not, Not totally, totally bonkers. bonkers.